Today I'm going to tie for you a yarn loop caddis. It uses just a few materials, is relatively easy to tie, and it does catch fish. It uses just one ply of a three ply acrylic craft store yarn. I cut it about three to four inches long and thin each end with a fingernail or another hard edge. You'll see that coming up. And I use a little pheasant tail and some hare's ear dubbing and not much else. So here we are. I'm going to tie this on a size 14 scud hook. Nice curve shank hook. I get these from Lively Legs, the guys from Ford City. Um, they do a nice business up there. They make some nice products and provide great service. So here I am thinning the edge or each end of that three to four inch strip of yarn. Um, using my scissors there. Uh, they're closed, so it is kind of a sharp edge, but not exactly the knife blade. And I got used to doing that. Two to three passes will thin thin it out and taper it on each end. I'll give it a little twist to help it maintain its integrity. And then there you go. So let's set that for aside a minute. You'll see the dubbing that I've prepared ahead of time, an inch and a half long little strip of dubbing that I'm going to insert in the loop. But let's get the thread started. So you can see I've left a little room behind the eye. Um, it kind of reminds me not to rush the head, to leave room. Um, that's important. Too many times we get up there and we don't have room left for a few more wraps or we're not able to cover the butt sections of something because we just didn't leave room to, to build our way back up from the eye. So I'm going to wrap the thread down around the bend a little bit. Pretty good ways on this one. A little curve won't hurt you. And here we have the loop. You can see it's folded in half, tapered ends together. I'll tie it in with one or two loose wraps. And then one trick here is to kind of give it a little tug, pull it back, and make sure that we've pulled it back almost as far as we can. Because if you don't, it'll start out thick and end thick. And that's not really what we want. I like a little taper at the beginning. I'll just wrap some thread on the hook to kind of level things out. Work my way back forward. And the old one finger half hitch. It's really two fingers. You see I trap it down with my middle finger there. But... And put the thread over the bobbin cradle. So here we are with that little piece of rabbit hair. And if you're mass producing these, you can lay out a number of these ahead of time. Same with the yarn. You can cut and thin a number of sections of yarn, and you can kind of crank these out. And that's one of the things I like about this pattern. You're going to bounce it along the bottom, and you're going to lose some. But you can make them you know, much faster than you can lose them. So there we go. Our, our dubbing is trapped. We're going to spin the, the yarn. It's my shepherd's crook. We're going to spin that a few times. Careful not to spin it too many times at first. It's very thin near the back end. You really don't want to twist it up until it breaks. But once you get a wrap or two, you'll see here, you get a wrap or two around there, you can go ahead and twist it up a little more. You can see the taper that we've kind of built just throughout the process. And here again, we don't want to rush the head. Leave yourself some room. It won't hurt. And there you can see, this is one of those things I mentioned in a different video where you stop your rotary vise in the direction where you can kind of handle both the in this case, the, the loop and the bobbin at the same time without doing kind of the throw over where you toss the bobbin over the top just to get a wrap on it. And here I'm trimming a close. And a couple more wraps just to lock things in place. 
and I like to. Now, we're, Katniss kind of has a, I don't know what, the, a bumpy back up there in, in the thorax. So if you use that first or that last wrap of yarn as a base for that, where the thorax is going to be, that kind of helps build that up. Now here I take a, a brush and kind of brush it away a little bit, have some of that green show through, and my thread is in place where I want to tie in, I don't know if we call this a shell back or a wing case, and those are a bundle of, those are pheasant tail fibers from the, the lesser side of the tail feather. They're, they're not stiff and, and they don't make great pheasant tail nymphs. But they're fantastic for a wing case, especially when you're going to use UV or some head cement and kind of lacquer things in place. And you can see that easily formed a nice bump, which mean, which will build up the top of the thorax, which is what we kind of like for these uh, caddis patterns, the pupae. They're, they're kind of... Um, I don't know. It almost looks like they have their shoulders hunched up right before they hatch or um, as they're emerging. So here I'm adding a little hair's ear or hair's mask dubbing. Hair's ear and hair's mask, I shouldn't use those terms interchangeably. Um, it's from a hair's mask, and I, and I get the longer, fuzzier stuff. I don't want the, the short, spiky fibers from the actual ear part of the hair's mask. So a couple of wraps and, and build that up and then brush some fibers out just to make sure that anything long and, and anything that can look like legs and the junk that hangs under the bug is brushed down and out of the way. Now this is from the, these are pheasant tail fibers from the good side of the pheasant tail. And I'm doing this just so they, they make thicker fibers aiming toward the back and kind of look like legs. So you could use a feather here and split it, and there are other techniques for making legs, but I have the pheasant tail out, and it's, it's handy, and I, I just grab a few fibers for each side, four or five fibers, and, and trap them into place, angled back, and about the length of the hook in this case. Um, they may be a little long, but the fish don't seem to care. Like I've mentioned before, my buddies complain about my flies once in a while, but Fish aren't quite as picky. So one little trick here. Now I'm going to come in and snip out some wayward fibers. There are some extras in there and they're going the wrong direction. But one little trick here is to wind your thread back a little bit, maybe even an entire eye length from the eye back, and give yourself room to fold these fibers back. I think this is a cleaner look and an easier way to trim those leg fibers. And then that gives me a nice place to tie down the wing case once I've pulled it over. So we'll kind of get that in place, wrap over the top, and pulling on the fibers while you're pulling the thread over the top helps to position that wrap and kind of pin them nice and smooth. And I get that nice little bulge that I was looking for. So a couple of wraps behind or over top. I think it was Helen Shaw that said three wraps will hold anything. So I got three over the top, one in front of it, and then I'll try and trim these out as close as I can. Okay, so we're all trimmed out. And we can start in the front, work our way up over wax thread or a little wax kind of helps sometimes so that your thread climbs up over without slipping. And there we have it. I'm in place, ready to do a whip finish. And three to five turns here, whatever it takes to kind of smooth things up. I'm not really worried about it being a solid knot because I'm going to, in this case, I use head cement, but UV resin would have worked fine. 
snip off the thread. And here we are with my fancy Wasatch uh, glue applicator. Put a couple of dabs on the bulb on top, the, the wing case. Make sure everything's covered. Those fibers aren't the most durable, so a little extra time here to make sure that that all soaks in, gets covered and soaks in is a is worth the effort. And then sneak down around each side and add a little more head cement on the thread wraps, that, which are the front part of the head. And I've taken the time to add eyes. When I fold that back, I'll put dumbbell eyes in there, nylon monofilament or, or something like it. Um, I've made these a lot fancier than these, than this one, but uh, I have to tell you, I haven't caught any more fish on those than I have on these. So there's a close-up. You get a nice look. You can see a little green and segments showing through. It's sturdied up in the segments with that dubbing. Uh, you can see the legs from the, the pheasant tail sticking below and kind of a nice uh, wing case across the back. So thank you for um, sticking with me as we get near the end here. Here's a, uh, a slide that gives you some description and the actual pattern. And if you want to learn more about me, take a look on Amazon. I've written a couple of books, and you'll learn more about me. I've shared my story.